Jesus also, or, or in scripture, it also says this, as he is, so are we. But where? In this world. It's back to the original intent. Adam was as God is. He could do everything God could do in the earth. Now, as he is, so are we in this world. So in other words, what God is in heaven, who Jesus is in heaven, that is what you are in the earth. That's what, that's what he's saying. It's not what you're becoming through death. It's not what you're becoming when you die because, once again, as I said, the original intent of God is that God will cause us to inherit the earth. So will we be raptured? Yes, but we will be back here still. I, say, I like to say it like this. You'll have a dual citizenship, which is what you already have. Now, this is good. So this means that when Jesus came, he left a glory that he had with the Father. That's what it means. Okay, so you know how the Bible talks about his crucifixion, and it says when he entered into his glory? You must understand what that means. It's saying that he entered back into a glory he left. Uh, okay, let's go further. This, 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 uh, this is, I'm enjoying this, by the way. So Jesus, remember he raises from the dead. So now he has been resurrected from the dead, which is the greatest, uh, the greatest miracle that will ever be done in history. There's no sign greater. There's no miracle greater. It's the resurrection. I love to preach the resurrection. I preach the resurrection almost every week in one way, shape, or form. I, find, I could be teaching on marriage, and I'll find a way to get back into the resurrection. Um, but, but my point that I, that I want to go into that I want you to see is that notice that after he rose from the dead, we see in Luke 24 that there was two disciples. Now, notice it says disciples. That means these were not casual followers. These were people that followed Jesus everywhere that he went. These were people that they had given up things to follow Jesus, just like the other disciples. So these were very dedicated learners, people that were disciplined, people that were taking his teachings and growing in them. And as it happens, it says they were talking about Jesus, how he had been crucified. But they were actually talking about how he must not be the Messiah because they were saying that it's the third day today and they didn't see him. The problem was Jesus walked right up to them. And when he walks up to them, he begins to converse with them about how Jesus had been, had been crucified. And long story short, they don't recognize him. They're talking directly to Jesus, and they don't recognize him. There's a reason that I want you to understand. In his resurrection, there was a change. This is something I, that I want you to understand. In Jesus' resurrection, there was a change. He was not the same as he was when he was in the earth for the three years. Okay? So, so watch this. So, so he goes to their home. He sits down. He, he talks to them. He begins to explain the gospel. He begins to break down the law and the prophets. He begins to explain it all the way from the beginning. I would have loved to be in that meeting. Um, and as he was explaining it from the beginning, this means it was a long time, by the way. It would take a long time to explain all the law and the prophets. Um, here's the thing that I want you to see, though. It says their eyes were opened. And then all of a sudden, they could see him. This is the next principle of revelation. Revelation opens the spiritual eyes to see realms of God that are otherwise invisible to us. So they see Jesus for who he is now. Oh, my goodness. Now, then there's this thing called the ascension. So you have the resurrection, but then there's the ascension. He changes again. There was another change again. John, who put his head on the chest of Jesus, knew his heart beat. He saw Jesus in a way they had never saw him before, with fire in his eyes, hair like wool. He was like the sun shining in his strength. Hmm. He 
saw Jesus as he is now. What am I saying? In scripture, when it says that as he is, notice that word is. He that was, he that is. That's his present reality. His present, what he is presently. This means when he says you are as he is, he's not even talking about the three years of his ministry. He's referring to him glorified. You are, we are not waiting to die to get a glorified body. The idea that religion has given us is you become glorified when you die and go to heaven and hallelujah. No. According to the same verse that says we're predestinated, we're justified, the same exact verse in Romans says that, you are, that he also glorified us. What he is, that is what is in your spirit now. Oh my goodness, I feel God. There's so much I want to say. So with that said, that is, if we were to define sonship, it's being exactly what he is in the earth. But then there's a term that Romans calls manifested son. So that means, we, it says we are given the power to become the sons of God. So we're sons, but are we manifesting sonship? So manifested sons doesn't mean there's not sons. It, it, it's, it's referring to sons that do what he's able to do. There's so much I could say, but I, I don't want to get too deep into it because I got to get into to, to what I really want to get into tonight. But, but this is the thing I'll say. If there was a word that can be used that would describe what Acts chapter 2 was and what the arrival of the Holy Spirit really is, it is the word secession. It's the word secession. Okay, so let me give you a little bit of background, and then we're going to get into the nice, fun, juicy stuff. Secession. Now, first let me lay this to you.